tissues or germ layers called ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Ectoderm gives rise to numerous structures including the brain, spinal cord, nerves, skin, nails, and hair. Endoderm produces the lining of the respiratory system 
and digestive tract and generates portions of major organs such as the liver and pancreas. Mesoderm forms the heart, kidneys, bones, cartilage, muscles, blood cells and other structures. time the brain continues its lightning evolution as it prepares to take charge of the entire range of human functions our little human is now 44 days old and measures 17 millimeters the eyes are now protected by delicate eyelids I had the great fortune of uh, getting my PhD at the University of Virginia under a, a, um, a brilliant scientist by the name of Erwin Koningsberg, and he was one of the first people to clone stem cells. As I started to do this, and I was cloning genetically identical cells, I started to realize that if I would take these genetically identical cells and put them into separate petri dishes and then change the environment in those dishes, that in one dish they will form muscle, in another dish they'll form bone, and yet in a third dish they would form fat by changing the conditions. Uh, it, you stop for a second and realize, well, wait, they're, they're all genetically identical. So what is it that controlled why they became muscle or bone or fat? And the answer was very obvious. It was like information from the environment. If I take the brain out of any living organism, there's an immediate and necessary consequence of that action. What is it? Death. And here's the point. You can take the nucleus out of the cell and the cell doesn't die. The cell can live for two or more months without any genes in it at all. It's not sitting there. It's moving around. It's eating. It's growing. It's meeting other cells and communicating with them. It recognizes toxins and avoids toxins. In other words, I did not change the behavior in one way, not so ever, by taking out all the genes. Two classes of proteins in the membrane. They're very important. One set is called receptors. What's a receptor? Do you have receptors? Of course you do. What Name some. Skin? What, name some other ones that people are pretty obvious about. Eyes, ears, nose, taste, touch. Where are all the receptors located? In your skin. And the same with the cell. But in the cell, they're not organized into these structures that we see, but the proteins have antennas on them. 
And each different thing the cell can see has a different protein with a different antenna. So for insulin, I have a receptor that sees insulin. For glucose, I have a receptor that sees glucose. For light, I have a receptor that responds to photons of light. So for everything the cell can see, there's a special receptor inside the cell. If I can uh, show it to you again, um, it works like this. Again, watch this. This is what controls biology. Antennas receive the signal from the environment, and when a signal is received, it changes the shape of the protein and allows the connecting device to connect the receptor to the output. The output is the channel. The channel creates a signal that enters into the cell, and that signal that now is going to go enter into the cell activates the functions of the cell. It causes the cell to move. It causes the cell to digest things. It causes the cell to change its uh, structure or behavior. So the fact is what? This is a, a signaling device. This is so that the bottom line of life comes from protein movement. That's the truth. If you stop protein movement, life stops right at that point. And it's, proteins are the only molecules that are moving, so they become the most important ones in the generation of life. String theory is based on the simple idea that all the four forces of the universe, string theory, we think, is a theory of everything, can be viewed as music. Music of tiny little rubber bands. So if I had a super microscope and I could look right into the heart of an electron, what would I see? I would see a vibrating rubber band. And if I twang it, it turns into a neutrino. I twang it again, it turns into a quark. I twang it again, it turns into a Yang-Mills particle. In fact, if I twang it enough times, I get thousands of subatomic particles that have been cataloged patiently by physicists about an atom, you read about its electrical charges, its volts. Atoms are measured by volts. And so what we're looking at is atoms have waves of frequency energy, so each atom vibrates at a frequency. So it's not only emitting a frequency, but atoms can also absorb frequency because energy can be absorbed by other energy. So energy. In other words, every atom is vibrating and giving off an energy frequency. But not only that, every atom is also receiving energy. So every atom or molecule in your body is not only giving off energy, but it's receiving energy, and the energy it receives will alter its expression. So what does that mean at the L level of the atom? Well, let me step in front of this and show you this. And the answer is, of course, and it works like this. Here's a tuning fork. There's a protein receptor with an antenna on it. The antenna vibrates at a certain frequency. Now, the antennas generally respond, as conventional medicine says, to molecules, which is true, because molecules have their own frequency, as it said in that slide. And when the molecule is present, if it vibrates at the same frequency as the receptor, then the receptor will vibrate when the molecule vibrates. And when the receptor vibrates, it will go from confirmation one to confirmation two as a result of responding to that vibrational energy. So the bottom line is what we expect is this. I hit the tuning fork, and then the, the receptor, which is in confirmation A, begins to absorb the energy, and then the result changes the shape of the protein, the structure, you know, the assembly of the, the, the backbone, how it's organized, changes that, and then the receptor goes to confirmation B or two at this particular case. So the point is, what is this called? And the answer is, in the dictionary, there is a word for this. And the word is perception. Awareness of the environment through physical sensation. And basically, so you just saw the labeling of what? A device that controls the cell. What is this device that controls the cell known as perception? So are you controlled by genes? No. You're controlled by perception. Energy, mortal, I'm part of the field. I'm something out there that's being picked up. Well, truth that there is a truth that's, that says that, in fact, that you're not controlled by genes. You're actually controlled by your perceptions of the environment. And as we'll talk about, perceptions mean beliefs.